السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. This is Hani Ismail from Planning Engineer website. In this live session, I would like to have some kind of discussion about planning questions and answers. And uh, usually when I do live session, I will do at the beginning some short uh, uh, advice for you until people come and uh, start receiving your questions to give you some answers. So my, my advice for today with you is about the uh, managing of your uh, financial life. Because I received too many questions, honey, I, am, uh, I don't have a job for three months and uh, I lost all my, all my money. Or I cannot have some development of my career because I cannot afford it. So I would like to share with you my experience in uh, uh, managing your financial situations. And actually, I will base my advice here about uh, a very nice book called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So here, uh, I am, I was very confused at the beginning between the assets and the liabilities. So the assets is something it put money to your pocket. The liability is something will get money from your pocket. So when you buy a car, is it asset, an asset or a liability? It is not an asset. It is a liability. So you have to pay for it. My point of view is, okay, you need to invest in yourself. You need to keep growing, especially those who are sending me some questions and some comments. Honey, we don't have a job right now. What to do? Study, enhance yourself. Uh, the online uh, world it has too many skills to be studied. You can find, you can improve your language, you can improve your technical skills, you can improve your communication skills. There are too many ways to improve yourself, but don't sit in your place and wait for something or someone who change your life. You have to move. Yeah, you need to move. And in order to move, put a simple plan. When I say uh, put a plan for yourself, it does not mean that you need to create a very complicated plan or something. No, it could be some bullet points. You say, okay, I need to do one, two, three, four, five. And in order to do these five goals, I will create this one, two, three, four, five, or I have to study this one. I have to enhance my skills in this area. Coming back to the planning. Planning, planning, planning engineer is not only a tool. Planning engineer, and I always repeat myself in this point. Planning engineer is some skilled person. And the skills should be communication skills, uh, knowledge, technical skills, tools, software skills. So you need to enhance all these skills, not only one skill and you forget everything else. So for example, if you would like to be a successful planning engineer, okay, what to do? First of all, you need to be sure that you can do the task as accurate as you can. What is your task is to create a detailed schedule for your project and keep monitoring the schedule, okay, until you reach to a stage where you can uh, hand over the project on time. In order to do this, you need to communicate with the project team. You need to uh, have some tools to help you in the creation of the schedule and the reporting. And you need also to have some soft skills so it is not only a tool. And in order to be a professional planning engineer, you just need to start. Very simple. If you start in the correct path, then you are very well to go. OK, so this was short introduction about uh, uh, this live session. I will start receiving your questions now if you would like to uh, ask about something. Uh, please type it in the comments. However, one last thing before I uh, start uh, showing you question and answering it. Please, 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 
your investment in yourself and your knowledge is the best investment ever. Uh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling this uh, to tell you to come and take some courses from me. No, don't take courses from me. Take from anywhere. But please, I was in a situation, I, am, uh, I was a planning manager in Dubai, and I was uh, in a position to interview some planning engineers. And I was not very happy at all because uh, many of the planning engineers I have uh, uh, interviewed, they don't know the basics. They don't know what is cost loading, what is resource loading, what is you know, uh, pivot tables, what is uh, uh, advanced, uh, not advanced now, the VLOOKUP, Fermiola, and Excel pivot tables. These things now is not additional, it is essential. And I'm very, very worried about who uh, people, planning engineers, who are not finding jobs and keep in their place, they are not moving at all. I, I know a very good planning engineers who keep uh, developing themselves. They send me uh, every time and so telling me, oh, I found this something, something new. I can do this by this method. I can do this uh, uh, task in, in shorter time and the better uh, accuracy. So this is the type you, you need to move. Don't sit in your place. Start moving. Okay, let's see what is your questions. Uh, we have here one question, what is same? Invoice creating, uh, uh, planning engineer scope or not? Okay, this is very good question, invoices. Uh, usually, if the invoice is coming directly from the Primavera, some projects, and I have a project running project right now I'm following, we are doing this. The invoice is nothing but the update of the Promovera P6. In that case, the invoice, yes, should come from the planning department. However, there are other projects, okay? They don't uh, rely on the uh, uh, program earned value uh, to create the invoice. In that case, it is between the QS and the planning engineer. But in order to be in a position to create your invoice in a proper way, you should have accurate and accurate cost loading. So when you say you finish, let's say, uh, ground floor columns, and you update the, this activity in Promovera, ground floor columns, 100%, it will give you earned value, some amount of earned value. Okay, if you are not loading it correctly and you are using it to uh, uh, create your invoice, then definitely the consultant will tell you, no, this is not logic, we cannot use it, and uh, you will lose this uh, option to create your invoice from uh, Promovera. However, if you have a backup, what I mean by backup, let me share you one thing here. I will share you one file I'm working now with my team uh, to tell you how we calculate the costs and resources I'll open the file and I will share you the screen Okay, this file, this file, we have here the BOQ items. We have the divisions, scope of work, unit quantity, rate, amount, blah, blah, blah. And we have here the floor percentage, each floor percentage. And from this one, we created here uh, uh, using uh, Excel query, we created here some file which, which has floor percentage, floor quantity, floor amount. Then we didn't complete this exercise yet, but then here we should add the activity percentage and the activity amount. So when the consultant asks me if I'm using my uh, uh, Promovera schedule for the uh, invoicing, when the consultant asks me from where you get this amount, I have a very 
detailed record. I will tell you, uh, tell the consultant, I get this amount. This is a BOQ item. I have a weight of this one for this floor, and this this uh, activity has this one, two, three items in the BOQ. Then I can convince the consultant or the client that it is easily can be done the uh, invoicing from the uh, promoter. I hope it was this uh, clear. Uh, let's see what uh, other questions we have here. Okay, thank you. Uh, here, uh, uh, okay. Uh, is it necessary to have QS estimator experience for planning? I started only with planning engine position since start. Okay. This is a very nice question. Uh, by default, by default, all the engineers, they have the QS skills. We can calculate quantities. We can uh, find, uh, um, yeah, we can do simple uh, uh, QS without any study, without anything, just from our college knowledge. Okay. But I don't recommend that the planning engineer in, uh, uh, invest more than 5% of his time in the QS job. Otherwise, he, there are another job, there are, uh, jobs for QS. So if you are a planning engineer, okay, you might do some calculation for QS, okay? I started as a QS, and then I uh, promoted myself to a planning engineer. And the QS uh, uh, period of my life, it was not very uh, bad, it was very good. Actually, it gives me the sense of the quantities how I can uh, have some gut feeling about the quantities, uh, common sense. But it is not a mandatory. It is not a mandatory to be a site engineer. It is not a mandatory to be a QS engineer. It is not a mandatory to be a civil engineer in order to be a, a, a good planning engineer. So in my opinion, QS is, uh, is a, a certain step Okay, you might pass it, you might not pass it, but uh, uh, when you are a planning engineer, this is a, the important thing. When you are already in the field, when you are already a planning engineer, do not invest your time in the uh, QS. I just, yesterday I had a uh, discussion with, with uh, my team about uh, uh, calculating the percentage in the data loading I told them, if you are a planning engineer in a good company, you should have a separate department for QS. You should have a separate department for estimation. Even. Don't put yourself in this trap and try to make the QS of the project to write to calculate the columns, the slabs, the masonry, the ceramic tiles, whatever, in order to put the weight in the cost and the resource loading. This is not a good uh, uh, solution at all you might you might do some small calculation it's okay okay but uh, you need to focus on your main uh, target main job which is planning engineer we have another question here uh, how implement many uh, in the same activity in program interruptions okay interruptions in the activities uh, and I believe you are talking about uh, mainly the uh, recovery schedule and revise the schedule. I prefer to make the interruption as a different activity. So if I have three activities and I have some interruption period, uh, and uh, if, let me open the Promovera and show it to you. If this interruption came in before the activity start okay then it's fine i can put it before the activity start i'll show you in a minute okay i'll share my screen here okay let's link these activities together Okay. Let's delete this activity. Let's say you have this activities and you have some interruption here before this activity. What usually I do, 
I insert a new activity and I call it here a suspension period or interruption or whatever I call it for now uh, this activity to be clear okay and here I will put that this activity started from here let's say and it is affected this one okay so this one is my interruption activity okay let's say this interruption happened before this activity so i will insert it i'll put it in a different milestone a different uh, work breakdown structure i'll make here interruptions for example wbs and i'll put this activity and i will link it pro in a proper way if the interruption happened in the middle of an activity i will split this activity into two the activity the portion of the activity before the interruption and the portion of activity after the interruption why i'm not doing it in the promovera itself because i would like to show it if i did it in the promovera itself i know there is a step period i can do it and i can do it, do it like this but i would like to show it to the client to the consultant to be crystal clear that there was an interruption here and this is the impact of the interruption so if the interruption happened before or after the activity very easy you will add a new activity for the interruption and you link it in a proper way if the interruption happened in the middle of the activity you split this activity uh, 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 let's say you it is happened in the middle of the masonry work so the masonry work before interruption masonry work after interruption this is my opinion you are uh, welcome to do it in p6 if you'd like to but I don't uh, recommend to have it in P6. Uh, rather, uh, I mean, alternatively, I recommend to have it in the um, uh, separate one. Okay, annoying uh, estimation online course. Now I know that it is not recommended. Thank you. You are welcome. No, no need to, in order to be a planning engineer, to enroll in the estimation of course. Mr. Adam, I have some difficulties in project where client don't give us access to any info regarding cost, labor material. How can I calculate plan percentage, actual percentage without cost loading schedule? Actually, the client is not the one who is creating the cost loading schedule. You as a contractor, you should create your own cost and resource loading schedule. Whether you are a main contractor or a subcontractor or a I mean, a small scope of work. You have your own prices. You have uh, uh, you have your own uh, planning. You should be doing your costs and resource loading. You should not wait for the client to give you the costs and resource loading. I don't understand, Adam, uh, what you mean by this. But in my opinion, you should not wait for someone to give you his work. You should do your own. Uh, Mr. Emil, uh, could you please, assalamu alaikum, could you please say to us best and the quick way to learn Excel? Good question. Um, I learn Excel by uh, uh, searching. Whenever I have a problem, I Google it. However, however, in order to reach to this stage, at least you need to have some fundamentals. Like, okay, you you know how uh, how this formula works you know how this uh, reports works okay it's fine and you keep developing yourself from this point but what about what about having uh, uh, an idea about the procedure you want to do yani what i mean i mean to say that if you know the excel formula only or the excel uh, features only without knowing the application of it in the planning it is not very useful however to answer your question correctly and in short i use google to search piece by piece when i am uh, uh, creating my sheets so uh, I, in that case i don't have to uh, uh, improve myself Another question we have, is it possible to calculate progress based on duration only? No, it is not possible. Uh, to be honest, uh, calculating the progress based on duration is not accurate. Uh, 
Uh, I would rather put a weight. I, I agree with my team about certain weight, okay, to calculate the progress. And I apply this weight instead of the duration. Uh, because we need to compare apple to apple, if you know what I mean. Uh, we need to have uh, uh, um, some way, some way to uh, unify things. Because, okay, let me tell you in the duration. I need for uh, uh, wheel stoppers, for example. I need for wheel stoppers one month, okay? And I need for uh, a complete floor slab one month also. They are now, if I'm using the duration, they are now equal in the weight. This is one month, 30 days. This is one month, 30 days. But are they uh, uh, the equal in the weight, the required manpower, the required uh, resources, uh, the earned value, the plant value? No. So we need to have a proper weight. This proper weight can be one of two, in my opinion. The cost, so we, we convert... Uh, the quantity and the efforts into cost or the man hours and in some projects i was using both cost and man hours and giving two different kpis to my team so they can um, see how how the progress based on this two uh, kpi kpi key performance indicator uh, we have another question here from athir what if management bm doesn't give the needed consideration to the planning function very good question. I, I, I will talk about myself, okay? Uh, if the planning of the project manager does not pay attention to the planning, uh, I have one of two options. And always I'm starting with option number one. Option number one is trying to get the PM attention. Like, I will solve his or her problems immediately. I will provide feedback about what is going on on the project. I will uh, forecast delays before it happens. So I will try to grab or take the project manager attention. And uh, I invented some uh, theory before. Uh, I call it the hope theory. <coughs> hope you know this uh, for fishing. <coughs> Uh, one time we don't have we have one PM who doesn't listen. He don't want to listen. He think the planning is uh, some colored reports, okay? And we don't know anything. And we are just keeping them because we need to keep the client and consultant happy. They ask it for the planning, so they give we give them the planning, and that's it. They don't they don't want to uh, see anything more from the planning. So what I started to do, I started to use my hook theory. This hook theory, I will give him or her uh, one piece of information, like, oh, uh, dear project manager, kindly be informed that the, in the next three weeks, we are going to record 2% of delays, and this will impact our uh, next progress meeting with the client. Full stop. <coughs> Same thing here without any attachment, without anything. I'm, I, I, I'm not doing this with everyone. I'm only doing this with this PM who doesn't listen, who don't want to listen. I, I went to his office many times trying to explain. I don't listen. <clears throat> now, he usually will fire back on me, okay? Telling, oh, you are telling, but uh, uh, I should be very well prepared, okay? So, when I send him or her something like this, I should be very well prepared. I have my backup data, my backup documents, my calculations. I checked it 100% is correct. Then I'm expecting the stone. He will come and say to me, what you are doing? Because if I send him more than two lines, he will not read. So, and if I send attachment, he will not open. So what I send, I send to him or her only a couple of lines of email and I CC his manager also. Uh, then he's starting talking, he's starting to prove that I'm wrong. And this is the point of discussion I want. Once we started the discussion, 
I can convince him or her that there is a problem we need to solve. So to make it short, when the PM doesn't listen, you should grab his or her attention by any means. Okay, let's say you try your best, you try this, and he doesn't listen. I am, if I'm in your position, I will start looking for another job. I don't want to be in a place where the project manager, construction manager, they don't appreciate the planning. Because I am appreciating myself, I know what, is, what I'm doing. I know that what I'm doing is important, okay? So if they didn't uh, consider what I'm doing as important effort, so I'll leave the company immediately. Okay, we have a, another question from engineer Islam Yusuf. What are the responsibilities of a planning engineer? How to become a professional planning engineer? Oh, this is a very common question. Uh, responsibilities of the planning engineer, there is short answer, there, are, there is long answer. Short answer is to help the project team to deliver the project on time and on budget. The long answer is planning engineer will start from uh, creating the tender schedule, okay? Then if after the project is awarded, he will do the master schedule, detailed schedule, costs and resource loading and he will do the weekly reports, monthly reports, and it might, might be there are uh, another version, what we call it internal schedule. So there are two, two versions of the schedule, one for the client and one accelerated for internal department. So whenever uh, uh, you plan and you miss your plan, you have an opportunity to catch up. But if you are in the, only using the uh, client version so if you uh, have a difficulties to apply your plan then you are in delays then uh, uh, planning how to become a professional planning engineer there are two two ways the academic study is a practical study the academic study you should have some engineering background okay or at least you should learn some engineering background. Why engineering? Because you know to understand one this, uh, yani one scope of work, one area, civil, electrical, mechanical. And by the way, there, nowadays there are uh, uh, civil uh, planning engineer and MEP planning engineer. Some companies now, they are looking for MEP planning engineers specifically for the MEP projects. The practical experience is to know how things are being done in a proper way. So you need to study in both cases and practice and just accept the first planning job you get in order to have a real uh, life experience. <clears throat> and keep keep developing yourself. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. How many level of schedule and which level of schedule we use in construction? <clears throat> Uh, in my opinion, there are five levels, but uh, in my opinion, uh, or uh, practically, we are using one of two levels, master and detail. <coughs> master and detail. The master, it is, should, should be something like uh, two pages, not more. The detail is detailed. So, the... Uh, the five levels, it depends on how many WBS you have. <coughs> but in, uh, in a practical life, okay, uh, they say, they might say we need a schedule level two, level three, level four, level five. I have, I have one article in the website about uh, schedule levels. But there is nothing solid to tell you, okay, uh, this level two, it means uh, level two, uh, what level of details you have. But usually what they say, this is level one, one line. This is level two. And then if you have another WBS here, it will be level three. Then if it's something underneath, it will be level four and so on to, to make it short. We have here one question on which is better to calculate progress in Primavera, physical or duration based. 
Usually physical duration percentage complete is sometimes too manual. Uh, please, which one is better in your opinion? Okay. Uh, I'm using duration percentage complete. Why? Because duration percentage complete will be uh, uh, يعني reflected in the cost and the time. But the physical percentage uh, duration or uh, physical percentage complete will be reflected only in one place. Uh, if you would like to segregate, and this is a good idea, uh, to segregate the uh, progress percentage from the earned value, then you have, then you can use the physical percentage. For some reason, you might say, I finished ninety percent of the time, but I finished only ten uh, percent of the cost. This is a case where we use the physical percentage complete. So. Uh, I, it depends on the situation, okay, where you will use physical or duration. And uh, there is nothing uh, uh, white and black in planning. Uh, always, maybe I use in one project duration percentage, in another project I will use physical percentage. All depends on the situation I have. We have another question here from Mr. Adam. What are the most recognized professional certificates for planners like equivalent of PMP for project manager. Uh, PMP also for planning. Uh, uh, I can see that we have PMP. Uh, if, you are, if you have the chance to get the PMP certificate, it will be very good. Okay. Uh, there is one also, uh, two certificates, one from PMI uh, and one from uh, CCC. Uh, uh, PMI SP and scheduling uh, specialist, something like this. However, uh, I myself, I took the PMP, then I got a master degree from Liverpool University in project management. So uh, I believe that uh, planning engineer does not need more than this in, in the academic uh, uh, study. I think if he has a PMP, then a master degree in project management is to be better than the other certificates. However, the most important thing is, do you know how to do things? This is the most important thing in my opinion. Because as a planning manager and uh, for a company, a whole company, I'm doing some interviews. I will tell you what I'm looking for a planning engineer. And this might be a good question also. You know what is the first thing I'm looking at when I'm interviewing a new planning engineer? I'm looking, first thing I look is his mentality. Is he willing to learn? Is he cooperative? Uh, can he be part of the team without troubles? Because some of you guys, when they join a team, they make too much troubles. This is the first thing I see. If he passed these three points, then I will start uh, checking his uh, or her uh, planning skills. If he didn't pass this stage, I will not check. I'll just reject him or her. So the first thing, in my opinion. Okay, we have another question here regarding preparing a revised schedule. I listened to your recent video. Consultant didn't convince about how revised schedule without actuals. Because consultant doesn't know how Primavera works, okay? Here, and he try to convince him or her that Primavera calculations will not be accurate if you used actual, actual update as a baseline. Okay, why? Why we are creating a baseline uh, at all? We need to know the planned percentage, okay, for the future. When you put a schedule with actuals, it will not give you accurate planned percentage in the future. If you, when you assign it as a baseline, it will not give you an accurate percentage. You can do it in Excel. Yani you can, uh, if the consultant insists on having uh, uh, actual baseline with actuals, then you keep your planned percentage on Excel because every time in Primavera to be changed. Uh, can you share any 
preference for preparing a revised schedule. Uh, I did one short video and I'll try to make one detailed video uh, for this one because uh, too many of you asked me about this. I will try my best to do one video for this. What we have here, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sir, in revision baseline, is it necessary blend value equal to earned value? Uh, not necessarily, but the variance should not be more than small percentage, one, two percent. It depends in, in which stage you are, but try to make it plant value actual to earn value as close as you can. Because uh, when you're starting, the starting point is important to be accurate. You are starting from a point where the plant is very near or equal to the actual. This will give very good indication about what you have right now. So in my opinion, yes, it should be in the uh, near to each other. Uh, we have here. I'm so interested. I started my career as a planning engineer recently. I have a lot of doubts. You're sure. All of us will have a lot of doubts. And you have... Uh, a benefit when I started my planning career uh, maybe 18 years ago I hadn't this internet resources you have the internet you have the resources you are watching me now you can ask me questions I didn't have this chance so you have better chance than me when you are in my age you theoretically you should be better than me learn something uh, try to enhance yourself uh try to have some solid courses about planning this is a good start also um uh, i cannot say more than learn and by the way some of you uh you know, when they start planning they say i know everything i am the you know, when they know just a few things in the planning then he start thinking that i am the biggest planning ever and there is a famous chart about the confidence and the experience. You know about it? Let me uh, uh, explain to you. Uh, how can I explain it? I need to draw. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Let's say this is a... Uh, experience okay and this is the uh, confidence okay when you have okay zero experience you have zero confidence about your work okay however when you have one experience okay you have might be eight confidence the curve is like this but when you have here five uh, five it means five of ten we are in our scale of ten we have five of ten experience your confidence will come down to three however when you have about eight experience the confident level will be about something like seven. So people will start with zero confidence because they have zero experience. Then when they have just a little bit experience, then the confidence level will jump, will jump dramatically. They only have a little bit of experience and they think they know everything. However, when they start gaining some more experience, okay, then they will start knowing, oh, there are a lot to know. So their level of confidence will come low until they reach to this level of experience, then their, their confidence will come more. It's just a nice graph. I saw it. Um, I, you might uh, see it uh, uh, Google it. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, about... Uh, having experience and having confidence about your role. Uh, 
we have another question here. What are the rules duties of planning engineer in PMO office? How it is different from a regular construction planning engineer job? Actually, the BMO, BMO office, it should uh, clarify the responsibilities. So ask your PMO, was it his directive or subjective or whatever? Uh, because the PMO could give only advice without any interference to the project. And it could influence the project to do something. So you need to ask your uh, PMO manager, what are my responsibilities? And by the way, uh, I received too many questions from you that what is the pros uh, responsibilities for a planning engineer? The first thing you should do when you join a new company, go to the, your manager and ask him or her, what is my responsibility? Very simple. Sometimes you don't know. <laughs> Sometimes the answer is everything, which is not a good answer, but yeah, okay. Uh, I have another question. Why consultant ask the schedule with all resource loaded? What is the benefit of it? I will tell you. And even I'm uh, working for the main contractor, I'm asking my subcontractor to do the same. I am a consultant, okay? I would like to be sure that you are going to finish on time. That is the purpose of planning. That is the purpose of uh, having monitoring and controlling. So I would like to know what is your plan for the resources for two reasons. The first reason, I would like to review it to be sure that you plan it correctly. Second thing is to monitor you that you provided the required resources on the required time. So very simple. I need the resources from you, whether you are a planning, uh, uh, whether I'm a consultant or client, or even I'm the main contractor and you are my subcontractor. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, is it justifiable to have lower delay negative float on monthly update compared to same monthly windows in window analysis? Uh, you are talking window analysis here. I uh, I assume you are talking about uh, EOT. Uh, have lower delay negative float on monthly update compared to same monthly window in window analysis. Actually, the question is not uh, super clear for me, but let me try to explain to you the concept of the window analysis and the selecting the window frame. You know that from one week to another week, if you are making your update in weekly basis, your uh, extension of time impact could vary. So the first thing you need to agree uh, with your consultant or client is to agree about the uh, fragment or the, the date you will take the cutoff date to have your update. We take the regular update, okay, then we compare it to the baseline. So let's say you were updated without the impact of the even delay 10 days. Then we implement the event delays and we update the program again. If you are delayed the same 10 days, it means this impact or this event does not impact your delays. You, you was delayed anyway by 10 days. In that case, it is not uh, executable delay and you have no right to claim for time or cost. But if you after implementing the delay impact to your schedule, you will show it delays of 15 days. In that case, you originally was delaying 10 days, and with the event impact, you have 15 days. So you have 15 days as an extension of time because the event delayed you 15 days. However, out of this 15 days, only five days was cost and 10 days without cost. So it is compensable, it means cost, compensable, executable, this is five days. Non-compensable, executable, 10 days. Because you was delayed anyway 10 days, so you don't have you don't have the right to ask for a prolongation cost. I hope this was your question. If not, please let me know. 
Another question we have here, how periodically we need to update the schedule. Normally it is uh, weekly. Uh, sometimes in uh, a fast tracking project, who's doing it twice per week. Uh, some other project, it is not important to see the progress in weekly basis, you do it in monthly basis. So it depends on the project itself, in my opinion. Uh, okay, how to compute the actual manpower productivity for daily progress from daily progress report, where we have multiple activities. If you have the uh, resource per activity and per quantity, then you might do it in very simple way. Let me share my screen and explain to you. I also noticed that uh, some of you is confused of this resource loading. Okay. Here, let's say profession. We have here, okay, we have here carpenter. Okay. Here days. We have here, or let's say numbers, because this is normally how uh, the uh, daily report would look like. So two numbers, okay. Now, let's say quantity, they did 10 meter cube, okay. What is the productivity rate? By the way, productivity rate, we have two productivity rate. We have unit per hour, or our per unit. So how many units they create each hour or how many hours required for each unit? Okay. So here we have two. You need to know how many hours you are working per day. Normally you are working eight. With 16 hours, they give you 10 cubic meter. So how many units per hour? You will divide the, from its name, the quantity divided by the hours. This is a productivity rate, 0.625 per hour. How to be sure that it is correct? Let me multiply this by the number of hours I have. If, let's see if it will give me 10, yes. And the other way around, how many hours per unit? So this is the hours, I'll divide it by the units. It will give me 1.6 hour per unit. Very simple calculation. I don't see it is complicated at all. Uh, if you still have confusion, let me know. Okay, uh, one another question. Can we do PMP before going to a job? Actually, for one of the requirements of PMP is to have a three years experience. So I don't think so. Uh, also, you need to have some uh, minimum experience uh, um, to in, uh, to understand the PMP and proceed further. Uh, make a video on how to make extension of time. I will try to, but okay. Uh, imagine that uh, someone will ask, uh, make a video how to drive a car. Can you drive a car after watching this video? You need to practice. That's why it is uh, uh, difficult to cover one complete subject in a small video. Videos will give you insights, will give you uh, some ideas, but in order to master the extension of time, you need to have a complete course with a case study. Okay, how to do this? What's the steps we should do? So, in, in my opinion, you should, you should take a proper course if you would like to have a good experience in extension of time. And uh, I don't know why, but uh, some of uh, some certain uh, regions, not religions, regions, uh, countries, I will not mention by name, but they feel that investing in learning is something not uh, necessary or not required. However, other regions, countries, they put it a priority number one. It's up to you. Uh, but in my opinion, it is it worth it worth. 
Here, what is the average pay of planning engineer as a fresh and a senior? I'm currently in case A. A good question. Let me show, share with you one nice file. Just go to planningengineer.net. Go to the blog. Search for salary. I hope uh, I made this uh, report for you. Here, the planning engineer average salary. This is a report I created for you. You can maximize it like this. Okay. Okay, you are looking for case A. So here we'll go to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, where it is? Here it is. Okay, let me explain to you how this report works. We have here three job positions, junior planning engineer, senior planning engineer, planning manager. We have total of 100, uh, 114 inputs for juniors. We have 38 inputs where the average monthly salary in local currency, it means in Saudi Riyals, is 7,461, which equal to $2,015. Senior planning engineer average salary, 12K, and this is a color, this is in dollars, how many inputs we based our calculation on. And the more inputs here, the more accurate you should expect. Planning manager is around 24K. This is for Saudi Arabia, and you can clear the filter, and you can uh, here also clear the filter. You can see here the most paying is United States in uh, Russia, Kazakhstan, New, New Zealand, France, South Africa, United Kingdom, uh, Tunisia, Qatar, Iraq. You can see where it is uh, in the map even, and what is the number of inputs we have. You can also uh sick that for junior planning engineer where it is the best place to work here is based on the average monthly salary for seniors for managers so i think you can investigate and see this report uh as i told you how to get it go to this website planning engineer.net and slash planning engineer average salary or go to just the planning engineer.net from the blog and search for the salary work I hope this one was clear for you. Okay, what else we have? Uh, Mr. Malik, window analysis. Scenario, let's say the monthly report of end of December has 10 days float and in, in case of 30 days window, end of December, when the delay event is analyzed, the contractor show delay of 30 days. Is it just... A... If you have a 30 days float and you burn the float, who owns the float first? Who owns the project float? The client, contractor? Uh, the common practice say, who use it first, own it first. And if the client delayed you uh, 30 days, for an activity and you have 30 days in this activity float, then خلاص, no claim because there is a float and you use it. If you, if you are delayed 30 days in this activity and then after this, after you, after you burn all the total float, uh, you, the client delayed you, then you have a right for the extension of time because you use the float, okay? first and then you can uh, um, ask for extension of time because you use the, the flow so whoever use it first he own it we have another question here uh, why there are no jobs for junior planning engineer who said so again i'll share my screen but who, who planning engineer who any any who will be selected a planning engineer with couple of uh, skills 
or a, or really a good planning engineer. This is a different. But anyway, let me share you also one thing we have here. You can go to the jobs section in our website. Okay, we post almost daily or each couple of days. Here you have the jobs. You have here for uh, Egypt, India, UAE, Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, and this post is two weeks ago. We collect the jobs, the proper jobs, which we feel it is good for you, and we post it here. You can filter for junior planning engineers. And here, this one, in India, Egypt, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. Once you created a, a resume in the website, then you can submit it with one click. Like if you click here, in any job, you can simply apply for the job by one click because you have only already your online resume uh, uploaded to the website. Uh, so coming back to you, make videos on how to create dashboards. You know, Engineer Muhammad is not a video. It is a complete course. Uh, and uh, I, I would love to tell you something that whoever cannot pay off my courses, just send me an email. I'll have a solution for you. Uh, but it is not a one video because you need to build a complete database. Okay. You need to complete uh, set up your data in a certain way in order to uh, have the uh, a proper formatting. Let me again share my screen to you to tell you what I'm talking about. Here I have the course which is called data management. And from each picture, actually, you would uh, imagine how was your data, something like this, and you are converting it to something like this. Okay. So see the course uh, uh, lessons. We starting to learning uh, what are construction project data, why we need to manage project data, Excel database, good bad, good and bad database, then understanding case study of the project, converting columns to rows. There are too many steps in order here how to make report one, report two, report six, in order to be able to create a proper. Uh, um, any report, you have to have a proper data. This is the idea. It is not only by creating a dashboard and then you forget to update this cell and this cell is linked to that cell and that cell should... No, no, this is not a good uh, dashboard. You need to have a proper dashboard linked in a proper way so that you can say, I have a good dashboard. Okay. I have another question. What are some of good practice to calculate and monitor equipment progress, equipment log? Is there any course that covers the subject in your website? No. Uh, uh, one course for equipment? No, I don't have one course for equipment. But what we need to, to, uh, to monitor for equipment, just define your uh, needs. <coughs> then you will be able to uh, find something for it. Just send me an email to info at planningengineer.net and let's have a discussion about this one. I might help you uh, creating some good reports or good templates to uh, uh, monitor your uh, equipment. <clears throat> Hi, please, could you explain how to share the weights on APC <coughs> project, especially for the procurement part? The weight, uh, first of all, you need to have some certain agreement with your team. Don't put the weight, uh, don't put the weight from your head. Uh, try to involve the project team in your weight calculations. This first of all. For procurement, we have, what is, the, what is the steps we have in the procurement? We have material submission, okay? Uh, even if you go or would like to go further before material submission, you have to, uh, we can say that we have uh, supplier selection, 
negotiation with the suppliers, uh, material selection, uh, then we have material submittal, material approval, issue the purchase order PO, then start manufacture, then deliver to the site. Let's say you uh, define some three or five or six steps. You need to agree with your team for each step of these. What would be the weight? You say one, two, three, four, five, six, then you uh, will have a proper weight studied according to the steps of your project, okay? And the agreement of your team. These two things is important. You need to have your project agreement, project team to agree with you about the weight, and then you know exactly what are these steps. And I told you about the uh, 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 procurement. Mr. Rafiq, what after PMP, is there any recommendation? Definitely. Uh, if you would like, uh, I, I will tell you what I did. Uh, after I took my PMP, I focused more on the practical experience. Then when I have a good practical experience, I went to the master degree. Uh, after I finished my master degree, I came back to the practical experience. So uh, what after PMP, practical experience find some good uh, source of information to learn from, uh, so find some uh, good projects to work on. By the way, uh, you also need to select your projects. Maybe you will spend uh, too, too much duration in a project. You are doing a very small job on it. This will not give you a good experience. So you need to find also good project, good, which will give you good experience. What is the role of a junior planning engineer is to comply with senior planning engineer requirements. Your senior planning engineer will tell you what to do. Maybe they will tell you how to uh, just do some updates, do some post loading, resource loading, some calculations, uh, uh, collect some information from the site. It's actually valid. Yani, which part of the planning you will do depend on your senior. Mr. Ahmad, uh, when we should weightage based on cost or man hours? Yeah, very good question. Actually, weight based on cost, we should do anyway. Uh, because we need to have a cash flow, we need to have uh, earned value, we need to have land value. Okay. What about cost based on man hours uh, or the weight based on man hours? If you are able to estimate the man hours for the whole project in a certain level of accuracy, then it might be even better than the cash uh, for the monitoring the project. I'll give you one example. Chillers. These heavy equipment, we normally put it on the roof of the building or in the basement or wherever, okay? And it is very costly. This is, uh, will cool all the building, the cooling system. Okay, you bring it, you put it in the place, you take two, three million. How many hours you spend to install the chillers? 100 hours. On the other hand, painting work, you will do thousands of hours and you will not reach a fraction of this uh, chiller's progress. So this one thing, which in, in the cost perspective, okay, will might give you uh, a misleading information. In my opinion, if you are able to calculate the project resources in a proper way, then use this KPI in your uh, reporting. Otherwise, we have a cost. Uh, regard to clarify on the question about productivity, can you please share the template for your daily report on screen and also please share your experience. What is routine activity on daily well beginner? Uh, daily report is not do is not being done by the planning engineer. Daily report is done by the uh, document controller. And uh, I cannot share it in public because it is uh, for a project, ongoing projects. I have to respect their privacy. But if you have a specific question in this one, just send me an email. I'll try to help you.
جي مصطفى وين يو كان سي ات از جود ناراتيف ريبورت كان يو تولد از بيست كومبوننتس اوف ات اوكي ناراتيف ريبورت اي سبوز يو مين باي ات از ذا ريبورتس ويتش ويل بي اتاج تو يور بيز لاين تو اكسبلين هاو تو ريد يور بيز لاين ان ا بروبر واي so in my opinion a good narrative report would be explaining the project uh, explaining your baseline concept first of all without going into into a detail like i divide the project into these zones i divide the project into these areas and these floors explain the project what the project consists of this building this uh, build up area the project start date project finish date and then you start explaining the project Then after this one, you start talking about your uh, uh, resources movement. If you have a scaffolding, for example, you say, I'll, we will use scaffolding for two floors at the same time. Then, then the life cycle of this scaffolding will come from this two floors to another two floors. So you are talk start talking about the important materials you have, like uh, uh, scaffolding, if you have uh, uh, tower cranes, if you have uh, other uh, key resources you talk about it you put some shade on it and in that case you uh, uh, will tell the client or the consultant how you are planning okay how you are uh, uh, moving with the resources and the uh, equipment also you might talk about the peak points where you have the peak manpower what you are going to do are you going to work night shift or are you going to work day shift how many hours are working every day actually there are too many things it depends on your project so you start thinking that i need to deliver a document that if anyone read it without knowing anything about the project he will start getting a good idea about what is going on don't assume that the person who read this document the narrative report will have any background about your project consider him or her as a newbie to the uh, to the project and reading the project documents will give him or her a very good idea about what is going on uh, i believe for this session it was long than more than an hour i hope you will find it useful type for me in the comments if you have questions for the next session so i will prepare some answers for you i hope you enjoyed this one see you in the next one